Mars missions image 3i Atlas doing its Mars flyby. The comet is now headed away from the planet Mars towards the Sun. What we're looking at, what we'll be seeing is the October 3rd ESA ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter turning its eyes towards, here it is, the interstellar Comet 3i Atlas as it passed close to Mars. Comet 3i Atlas is a slightly fuzzy white dot moving as we see towards the near middle of the image. Despite not being designed to capture something so far away, the ExoMars TGO reveals a coma of gas and dust surrounding the icy rocky nucleus and the image is via ESA TGO CASIS. This is the path that it would be taking. We also see that Comet Swan it's making its way into our inner solar system and we will be passing Comet Swan's debris. This is a path that 3i Atlas will be taking heading towards uh, Jupiter. And of course our Earth will be behind the Sun as it does that. So the Mars mission image between October 1st and 7, ESA's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter TGO turned their eyes towards this interstellar comet passing close to Mars. The two Mars orbiters have the closest view of the comet of all ESA spacecraft and during its closest approach on October 3rd, the interstellar object was 30 million kilometers or 18.6 million miles away from them. Each spacecraft used its dedicated camera to watch the comet pass. I don't know what that other object is that is uh, flashing. You'll see it there. I don't know what that is. So um, this is the uh, it's the fuzzy what dot the dot we see. So the casters could not distinguish nucleus from the coma because 3i Atlas was too far away. Uh, imaging this kilometer wide nucleus would have been as impossible as seeing a mobile phone on the moon from Earth. That's how far this thing was from the planet. But the coma, measuring a few thousand kilometers across, is clearly visible. The coma is a result of 3i Atlas approaching the sun. The sun's heat and radiation is bringing the comet to life, causing the, the comet to release gas and dust, which collects as its halo surrounding the nucleus that we see. Cassis could not measure the fuel size of the coma, the full size of the coma, because the brightness of the dust decreased quickly with the distance as we see. It means the coma fades into the noise in the image. Now what about the comet's tail? Typically material from the coma is swept into a long tail which can grow up to millions of kilometers long as the comet moves closer to the sun. The tail is much dimmer than the coma. We can't see the tail in the Cassis images, but it may become more visible in future observations as the comet continues to heat up and release more ice. The uh, work continues. 3i Atlas has not yet revealed itself in the Mars Express images. We have more images yet to come. The best is yet to come. So that's partly because these were taken with an exposure time of just 0.5 seconds, the maximum limit for Mars Express, compared to 5 seconds for ExoMars TGO. Scientists will continue to analyze the data from both orbiters, including adding together several images from Mars Express to see if they can spot the faint comet. They also tried to measure the spectrum of light from Comet 3i Atlas using Mars Express Omega and SpyCam spectrometers and ExoMars TGO Nomad spectrometer and at this point it's not certain whether the coma and tail were bright enough for a spectral characterization. Scientists will keep analyzing the data over the next weeks and months to try to figure out more about what 3i Atlas is made of and how it's, uh, it behaved, it's behaving as it approaches our sun. And Colin Wilson, Mars Express and ExoMars project scientist at ESA said, though our Mars orbiters continue to make impressive contributions to Mars science, it's always extra exciting to see them responding 
to unexpected situations like this one. I look forward to seeing what the data reveal following further analysis, he says. Now, the origination from outside our solar system, Comet 3A Atlas is only the third interstellar comet to ever been seen, following Umama 1i in the 2017 and 2i Borisov in 2019. These comets are absolutely foreign. Every planet, moon, asteroid, comet, and life form in our solar system share a common origin, but the interstellar comets are true outsiders, carrying clues about the formation of worlds far beyond our own solar system. Comet 3A Atlas was first spotted July 1st by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System Atlas in Rio Hutaro, Chile. And since then, astronomers have used ground-based and space telescopes to monitor its progress and discover more about it. Based on its trajectory, astronomers suspect that 3A Atlas could be the oldest comet ever observed. It may be 3 billion years older than our solar system, which itself is 4.6 billion years old. So uh, next month, we'll be observing the comet with Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer JUICE. Though JUICE will be further from 3A Atlas than the Mars Observer, where the observers were last week. So it will see the comet just after its closest approach to the Sun. This means it will be in a more active state, but we don't expect to receive data from JUICE's observations until uh, February 2026, because it takes a long time for it to get together. It's going behind the Sun and then out towards Jupiter. So Comet Interceptors is uh, due to launch 2029 into a parking orbit. From there, it will be live in uh, wait for a suitable target. Um, ESA will prepare that. These could be a pristine comet from the distant Oort cloud that surround our solar system, or unlikely but highly appealing the interstellar object like something like 3i Atlas. So it remains improbable that we will discover an interstellar object that is reachable for comet interceptor, but as a first demonstration of a rapid response mission that waits in space for its target, it will be a pathfinder for possible future missions to intercept these mysterious visitors. So, bottom line, spacecraft around Mars have caught images of interstellar comet 3i Atlas as it made a close approach past the Red Planet. And we expect a lot more images coming to us in the next few days, weeks, and months. Now, the comet interceptor, which will be launched in 2029, we don't even know how fast that will be going. It will let me remind you, one eye, Umama, was traveling about 58,000 miles an hour. Two eye, Borisov, was traveling into our solar system at around 78 miles, 1,000 miles an hour. And this one, three eye Atlas, is coming in at 130,000 miles an hour. We don't have any craft that can go that fast to catch up with it if we do have this uh, comet interceptor launching parked outside in order to catch up with any type of a comet coming into our solar system. Will our craft be that fast? We have no idea. So now uh, the uh, 3i Atlas uh, interstellar object is passing Mars headed towards Jupiter. The uh, third known interstellar object. 29 million kilometers from Mars. The closest approach to any planet during its one-time journey through our solar system and it will reach perihelion, its closest point to the Sun, October 29. Its perihelion distance will be roughly 1.36 astronomical units, AU. That one AU is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, about 93 million miles. So if you're interested in tracking the object, you can go on NASA's Eyes on the Solar System tool, offering you interactive simulations of its path. So a 3A Atlas will not be visible to the unaided eye from the Earth at any time. It will be possible to view the object with an 8-inch or larger telescope, but the best time for that won't be until November, because it will be behind our Sun, as we said. 
And if you spotted then, you'll be in good company between November 2nd and 25th. ESA's Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer Juice will be observing the comet with various instruments, and it uh, looks towards 3A Atlas so soon after its close approach to the Sun is likely to have the best view of the comet in a very active state with a bright halo around its nucleus as long and a long tail stretching out behind it. But we won't be expecting to receive that data until February of next year. So where did it come from? They say it came from the Sagittarius direction in our sky. That is, it came from the direction of the center of the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy. But there are billions of stars in that direction. Which one is the home system of that object? There have been studies made. One of the team scientists, Javier Perez Couto, University Coruna in Spain, traced a path of this object back 10 million years. Astronomers were seeking its origin star or any stars that might perturb its path as it traveled from its point of origin to our solar system. The researchers examined the trajectory to help with the help of Gaia Space Observatory. Uh, Gaia collects the data on billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. So these astronomers' calculations took them more than 100 million astronomical units or Earth-Sun units from our solar system. And with the data, they said they identified 93 nominal encounters for 3i Atlas, 62 of which were significant. Yet they found that none of those encounters produced any meaningful perturbations of the Atlas orbit. So in other words, of all those encounters, encounters happened too fast with the stars too far from 3i Atlas to meaningfully impact its trajectory. So in the end, they didn't find a star along 3i Atlas path that might have responded for bright, bringing the, three, the third known interstellar object to us, they say. Okay, well, I did talk to you a few uh, days ago concerning the fact that 70,000 years ago, uh, a star with its brown dwarf companion touched the edge of our solar system, and that was Schultz star. And uh, they say that even though it did not perturb the planets in our solar system, it did cause gravitational waves, space waves and ripples through that area and into our solar system. They believe that, that is, those perturbations could have dislodged even comets from our Oort cloud coming into uh, our solar system. Okay. Now we also have we had a dual star explosion, and uh, we have galactic waves and space ripples going through our Milky Way galaxy. The scientists, the uh, the uh, astrophysicists, do not know what has been, what is causing that. It's still going on. We even measure those waves on our Earth with very sensitive instruments that the astrophysicists have. We can measure those space waves uh, impacting our Earth even though we as people don't feel it, they are there. So we don't know what's going on outside of our solar system. Uh, we do expect in 1.3 million years a larger uh, star system than Schultz star that impacted us 70,000 years ago to impact us in 1.3 year, million years. Now what happened 70,000 years ago with Schultz star, we did have a uh, Toba super volcanic eruption 74,000 years ago. 70,000 years ago, we also had a Yellowstone super, well, it wasn't a super eruption, it was much smaller, but the Toba was an almost extinction level event. The paleoanthropologists state that they believe there were only 10,000 Homo sapiens that survived that extinction level. So we do have a lot of things going on in space above our heads. We'll keep an eye on this. Please leave your comments. And uh, not comments, comments. Thank you. And thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.